Hello and welcome to OBG Talk, produced in partnership with the ABS CBN News Channel. I'm Patrick Cook, Oxford Business Group's Regional Editor for Asia. Today we're going to talk about infrastructure development within the context of the government's flagship Build, Build, Build program. President Rodrigo Duterte was elected in 2016, promising a golden age of infrastructure for the Philippines under his administration's flagship Build, Build, Build program. 75 priority infrastructure projects were identified for completion during his presidency and public infrastructure spending is forecast to rise from 5.4% of GDP in 2017 to 7.3% of GDP by 2022. Since coming to power, Duterte has shown a clear preference for financing major projects through official development assistance known as ODA and the state budget, limiting the scope for conventional public-private partnerships favored by his predecessor. As a result, the private sector increasingly seeking opportunities to participate in infrastructure pipeline through unsolicited proposals, such as the Makati subway project, which was pitched directly to the local government. How much progress has been made so far in the Build, Build, Build program, and is there potential for more private sector involvement going forward? Joining me to offer his expert insights on this hot topic is Antonio Chu, President and CEO of IRC Properties. Tony, thank you for joining me today. Thank you, Patrick. Okay, so first some background because IRC is, is better known as a property development company, but recently you've been diversifying into infrastructure development. What prompted this change and to what extent was it prompted by the Build, Build, Build program itself? Well, the uh, Makati Intracity Subway project is uh, five years in the making. And uh, it just happened that uh, we were at the, uh, the right time, uh, in the right place, uh, uh, with the right people. And uh, IRC um, is uh, a property company. We are just using the uh, infrastructure uh, diversification as a uh, strategy for the paradigm shift from affordable housing towards building communities uh, alongside the growth of uh, the new subway system. This is often called the, the golden age of infrastructure for the Philippines and the government has shown a clear preference uh, for official development assistance to fund some of the big ticket infrastructure projects in the pipeline. What is your opinion on, on, on the effectiveness of, this, of, of ODA funding to speed up in infrastructure development here? Well, ODA has always been uh, a key driver in infrastructure development of uh, developing countries. Uh, the key here is uh, the proper assessment on the details of the ODA because there's no free lunch. Uh, you have to look at what, what is attached um, or what uh, is the hidden agenda of the ODA. Assuming everything is, uh, is at par and transparent, the, the key of the ODA is in the implementation. If you implement it uh, properly, then uh, I guess it has a very, very big boost to the, uh, uh, implement, uh, to the growth of the GDP of a developing nation. What do you think of the risks involved? You mentioned debt, but also in, in bureaucratic delays in actually releasing these ODA funds. Well, bureaucratic delays in uh, developing countries, uh, particularly in, uh, in Philippines, is, uh, is a norm. You just have to uh, live with it. How has the private sector adjusted to this shift towards uh, ODA funding uh, at the expense, perhaps, of conventional public-private partnerships? Well, uh, for, for the private sector, uh, in the Philippine setup, I guess uh, the recent uh, growth of uh, projects in terms of the PPP model has created a lot of uh, new infrastructure development. And I think that's where, that's where uh, private ex expertise is coming from. Uh, private sector can drive things more uh, uh, with more flexibility. Uh, more accountability and at, uh, at a la uh, faster speed. And you've recently led a consortium that's been awarded the Makati Subway project. So how do you assess the space for unsolicited proposals and the framework in place to allow yeah, unsolicited proposals for big infrastructure projects? Well, this is a, this is a game changer and this is a, uh, something that will inspire more uh, local conglomerates or for foreign uh, uh, groups to look at uh, how they can uh, participate in this uh, 
eight trillion uh, build, build, build uh, program of the government, and uh, they can take advantage of the current uh, situation. I believe in every every crisis there's a, there's an opportunity, and in uh, in uh, the Philippines at the moment we are almost in uh, chaotic transport delays in terms of uh, uh, implementation of these uh, big transport uh, infrastructure projects. So this is uh, this is the golden opportunity for us to really um, maximize the uh, or optimize opportunity of. Uh, participating in the growth through the PPP or through the uh, hybrid PPP or through the uh, um, uh, building, uh, I mean, bidding process. Tell us a bit about your own experience with the Makati subway project then. How, how do you think the environment, regulatory environment, can be improved to allow uh, more yeah, efficient uh, project implementation from uns unsolicited proposals? My own experience is, uh, of course, uh, with uh, talking to a local government is a lot faster than talking to uh, the, a lot of uh, government, national agencies. So um, <coughs> I think uh, directly working with uh, an LGU uh, may be, may be a, uh, a faster route. A local government unit. Local, local government unit. And then you, you uh, evolve to become a nas na national player uh, on, on step number two. Do you see any logistical difficulties or regulatory difficulties integrating the Makati subway project with uh, other transit projects that are being overseen by the national government? No, I, I actually uh, uh, would like to really stress that uh, this government is open to, to uh, foreign investment. and, and uh, um, our our project, uh, we from the start we are we are planning it in a way that it will sync directly with the with the, the national transport hub transport network. And I want to touch on financing issues of, of infrastructure projects in general. How feasible is it to, to finance big projects through the Philippine capital markets or through peso denominated loans that would avoid the foreign exchange risk? Well, there's enough liquidity in the local market. I guess it's not uh, not that difficult to to raise uh, local denominated uh, debt, local car I mean peso denominated debt, and uh, the uh, the only challenge right now is the it's more on the uh, uh, foreign ownership restriction, which allows us uh, I mean which uh, is actually uh, blocking the entry of more foreign investment. Because for us to raise significant local debt, you, you need to have the equity component. Mm. And with, uh, with restrictions on the 60-40 rule, then uh, there is a limitation to uh, up to certain le only, uh, I mean, there's a, there's a certain limitation as to how much equity you can raise. And that is, uh, that, that is actually creating the obstruction to, to raise more local uh, currency. Uh, can you tell us a bit more on the on the financing model you're looking at for the Makati subway project? Well, the Makati uh, subway project uh, would be a, a uh, will be funded through uh, equity infusion from our principal investors, both local and foreign. Uh, but uh, bulk will be coming from financing uh, of the EPC contractor. Going back to, to the Build, Build, Build program, um, we talked a bit about the ODA funding, unsolicited proposals. Often we hear of hybrid public-private partnerships. Do you see perhaps a role for more conventional build, operate, transfer PPPs going forward to help complete the pipeline? Well, um, there's all, all kinds of uh, options available, whether it's a BOT, uh, BT, or BO or BTO. These are so all many acronyms. Yeah, it's uh, <laughs> it's it's uh, it's all possible. The key is really on the execution. How do you uh, how do you uh, uh, strike the deal with the government? How do you fast track the the necessary steps? Before you talked about community development, affordable housing. There's a there's a huge affordable housing backlog here in the Philippines. How is infrastructure development going to help in terms of yeah, making land available for not just high-end properties, but also affordable housing as well? 
Well, uh, more roads, uh, more railways, and more ports will develop more communities. If you notice, out of the 7,107 islands of the Philippine archipelago, only about 2,800 has uh, inhabitants. And uh, all these so supposed uh, communities are formed and developed because there is access to river, ports, seaports, or uh, roads, or um, the uh, railway system, the stations. So the uh, uh, development uh, in terms of uh, having more infrastructure, more roads, more airports, more seaports, more railway station, more subway station, uh, will create uh, more communities and therefore decongesting uh, the, uh, the people uh, flock, flocking into the uh, uh, Metro Manila. I want to finish by asking you for your, for your outlook, basically. How confident are you that this pipeline of big projects in, in the Philippines will actually come to fruition and that in the next four to seven years we'll see a, a much better infrastructure in the country, better connectivity and by extension more better productivity in the economy as well? Well, I am very optimistic and uh, uh, with, uh, with the, the government opening more uh, investment opportunity to the Chinese investor, I think there, there is a lot of, uh, a lot of uh, windows for uh, uh, for further growth in terms of uh, the infrastructure uh, sector, and uh, four to seven years may not necessarily be enough to complete uh, what we need to complete because the Philippines was technically uh, sleeping for the last thirty years. So we're trying to catch up, and uh, it will take a lot of time and a lot of effort. However, uh, generally speaking, I'm very optimistic. Excellent. Well, yes, I think the Philippines is definitely wide awake at the moment. Yes. So, yes, thank you very much for your insights and best of luck with the project. And that's all for today's edition of OBG Talk, produced in partnership with the ABS-CBN News Channel. I'm Patrick Cook and thanks for watching.